Alright. Had a little lag there, but we seem to be alright. Go ahead and get this camera turned on. Hope everyone's doing well. Oh, probably help if I do this, eh? What up, what up? <laughs> We're doing some commercial fly tying. Working on some Bob's Banners, some other flies, but I figured we'd go live. Let me go ahead and adjust this. The music's super loud. God damn it, Jerry. Gosh darn it, Jerry. And we'll go ahead and switch over to our music. I hope everyone's doing well. Appreciate everyone tuning in. I hope everyone's having a great start or Tuesday. So kind of start to their week. We did some live fishing last night, which went pretty well for the most part, except we didn't catch a darn thing, but you know, that's all right. Still had a good time. Just that. We just want a little background music. Boom, boom, boom. All right. We are tying banners and clousers today. But I have a bunch of banner tails that I have t tied up. Let me go ahead and adjust that. So we have some chartreuse tails we're working on. And then we'll work on some clousers. We're just hanging out at the moment. I hope everyone's doing well. Yeah, we did some fishing yesterday, but unfortunately, no avail. It was looking beautiful out, too. Like, perfect for some some action. But I'm surprised uh, we didn't get any. Fishing a pop lip as well. We're going to have to tie some pop lips at some point. So it's fishing pretty good. The next one, though, I want to make the lip... A uh, little less silicone-y, so it's a, a thinner lip. I also want to make the fly slightly larger, and I want the lip to be larger as well, because the hook point determines how lar how uh, deep down you can go with the, the lip, unfortunately. So that wasn't a very large hook that I used. I want to use something larger so we can get a more... Essentially, some more action out of the lip. Tie a larger lip. Go ahead, do this. Scroll. Can I make that? Oh, I can switch. Perfect. That works. So I got some chartreuse bucktail that I'm mixing together from two tails. One of them's an older tail, but for the Bob's Banners, you don't need really amazing material so I'm mixing some of this less than ideal bucktail with that and this is commercial tying this is for a local fly shop two local fly shops so we do a lot of blue fishing out here in the spring a lot of people fish for big blue fish Specifically with top water flies and our floating line and these Bob's Banners. So I end up tying a lot of Bob's Banners. Let me close this. My dad's out there. I gave him my saws all.
cut a bunch of branches up. So we're going to be using some flash here. And essentially, I tie a section of bucktail, then I tie some flash, then I tie some more bucktail, and then we're going to wrap some crystal estes. We're essentially just tying the tails, essentially. And then we'll... You know, Doc, I actually attempted to cut uh, one of these foam heads with my foam cutter, and it doesn't work. It's like a different sort of foam. Maybe because it's some sort of closed cell foam or something. I don't know. But my foam cutter, I had to turn it up really high to cut it. And I was like, oh, this is just easier to use a razor at that point. So, because uh, I tried cutting the head at a diagonal to make that pseudo pole dancer. But I couldn't really get it to cut very efficiently. So I don't know if this particular type of foam doesn't work with a hot wire cutter. I don't know. I think you're just going to need to cut it with a razor. I was really surprised that it didn't cut through. Because, I mean, this thing cuts through insulation foam like it's butter. And it's so hard to cut that with a razor. I think it's just due to the design of the foam. Yeah, but that means we could probably use other types of foam. You know what I mean? That just means we're going to have to go with a different type of foam, is all. I know they used to use a lot of surfboard foam back in the day, specifically for, um, what do you call it, for poppers. That's how Joe Blados uh, came up with the crease fly. I don't know if I butchered his name or not, but out here on Long Island, he used to use surfboard foam. Stories of his, his spouse, his wife, going nuts because there's <laughs> surfboard foam dust all over the kitchen and stuff. So I wonder if we can use some of like the insulation foam that I use, but then just seal it with something and uh, airbrush it, you know, like how I make my terrain or something. Today's been interesting. What's going on, GD? How you doing? What have you been up to? Yeah, eventually we'll probably tie some flies later uh, for my fly box. Uh, looking for some ammo, gotcha. This is the benefit of having a rotary vise right here, by the way. I like to get, oh, I like to get a fair amount of um, thread on there, so when I put the popper head on. Essentially what I do is I take 5 8 foam head and they come like this essentially. And I cut them and then I put foil tape around it. Um, but I also ream out the middle so that way we can slip this on there. Just a classic Bob's Banner, another Bob Popovix fly. That's a staple in my opinion. Oh, 3D printing the pole dancer heads. That's interesting. Now the 3D printer I use is a resin 3D printer. It could certainly make a head. Uh, the problem is, I don't know if it's, I don't think it'll be buoyant. I don't know. I guess it depends. Most of the fishing 3D printing things that you find, uh, that's a great idea, by the way, Jin. How you doing, Jin? Most of the 3D printing stuff you find are for ST, I mean, uh, for FDM printers. And I have an STL printer, which is resin as opposed to... Uh, or liquid resin that's UV cured as opposed to the spools of uh, filaments that they use with FDM printers. But I could certainly make one. It's not as strong generally as an FDM printer, but it's I get finer detail with a resin printer. That's why I use it for miniatures. And that's why with an FDM printer you can make all sorts of crazy stuff. <clears throat> but I'll have to look into that. There's all sorts of lures and stuff. I don't know if anyone... In the fly fishing community has made an STL for a pole dancer head though. But yeah, we were fishing some we can always actually take a look for it. We were fishing some um well I'm not gonna look on stream because there's always not safe for work stuff on these S <laughs> on these <st> <laughs> There's always some anime girl <laughs> or something. Um what was I gonna say though? Uh we were fishing a DC Dodger kit 
which is a essentially a copy of a pole dancer and it has but it is slightly different but it uses a tube it uses a lead keel and it uses a loop and whatnot but it's a very specific head and with the right stripping you literally get a six inch side to side sometimes even more um, walk the dog action so if you're familiar with the pole dancer you know what I'm talking about and trying to make those things is really tough. It not only takes a combination of tying them right with like adding a keel, using the tube and having that float right, um, but also the shape of the popper head is very important. But not only that, it's just like the weight distribution of the fly. So using these pre-bought heads, that's like a kit called the DC Dodger. I don't even know if they still make it. I bought this stuff years ago. Or we're trying to find a way to replicate it. Now, I know we should do some research. There's a very good fly tire who I've talked to many times on Instagram. His name is Rupert Harvey Flies UK. So maybe we should check his Instagram out. And I've been meaning to. I could reach out to him. I've talked to him before. He's very cool. He reached out to me one day about environmentally conscious um, packaging for flies that he found a good alternative. It was like a biodegradable plastic, which is very cool. He's a real cool dude. Really great fly tire as well. He does a lot of fly tying for GTs and stuff. But I think he has a jig. Um, like a 3D printed jig, possibly. That's what we should really look, in, look into, Jin. A 3D printed jig. And then you slip the foam in there. You cut it. And what I saw him doing, he had the process. He's using the large popper heads, which... <clears throat> if I can find it... I know I have some there. Three quarter inch is what I used yesterday, but they also have one inch heads. And what he did is he drilled a hole from the front side and created a cavity, or I think from the back, I'm sorry, I forget which way, but maybe from the front. So it cups the inside of the mouth. And then he put it in a jig and cut it um, at an angle, which you could just essentially take a, you could 3D print a jig. I have jigs for my foam um, for making... Uh, terrain for Warhammer and for D&D and stuff like that. But can you add an air cavity with your 3D printer? Technically, yes, and I can structurally reinforce it. Um, the problem is the resin is not necessarily... You really have to clean it properly with alcohol afterwards, and then you have to cure it in the sun because it's kind of almost toxic. Uh, toxic so... Hey, Slim Thunder, what's up on YouTube? Hell yeah, baby. Smoke them if you got them. Screw, screw. On the tube, yep, we got it figured out. We're using Restream, which is uh, kind of working out. I want to test doing 1080p, but I, I'm going to tell you right now, without proper bitrate on Twitch, um, streaming at 1080p is not ideal on uh, Twitch. But on YouTube, you can stream at much higher resolutions and whatnot. So I'm thinking about bumping it up to 1080 I think the folks on YouTube should be able to watch it in 1080, no problem, in HD. The problem is Twitch pixelates stuff. Now, it's normally with video games and streaming games with grass and stuff like that because the way that the encoding works, it causes it to be blurry. So technically, I might be able to get away with fly tying on Twitch with 1080p, but I'm streaming at 4,000... 500 bit rate or something like that and ideally you want to bump it up to six or eight thousand Which is you need to be a partner on twitch to be able to do that. Meanwhile on YouTube you could stream at 1440p if you really want <laughs> Which is kind of nuts Unfortunately, I've I've tried um, I Know one thing I can only record so long with my camera in 4k. I know that for a fact if I try and So I don't know about and I read people talking about uh 4k live streaming they've had issues with but i gotta i guess we could always test it with this camera i'm essentially just capturing what the camera sees i'm not recording so there's not as much of a strain on the camera and we're using an external battery for it all right No, 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 I'm not going to mod here. Nope, no, you'd believe me, you don't need to. <laughs> I don't think we're, uh, we got that many people watching, but don't worry. I have two computers and a couple monitors, so I'm, I'm watching on the other side. If somebody gets frisky on YouTube, we'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. There you go. Oh, the internet's a wild place. Twitch is a little bit more friendly than that sort of stuff, though. Uh, Slim Thunder, I will say. Compared to the old YT. So personally, I may need to <laughs> refrain from doing my normal Ally Flies Mike shenanigans. We're trying to clean it up a little bit. I'm not a hot tub streamer anymore. But man, yeah, I really thought we were going to catch something yesterday. I'm kind of bummed out. I want to, perhaps I'll go later, but I, th I think um, we're doing our z session zero for D&D &D for my buddy, so. But perhaps afterwards I can sneak out and do some fishing. Oh yeah, I I got to figure out how to do that, Jin, in a clean way. You know what I mean? There's a way I can do it with this software, but I don't think that's the way that I want to do it. So what I'm trying to do is figure out. I think I need to, on Chrome, download a an extension. Um, Chatty, I think it's called or whatever. I know a lot of big streamers use it. And you can capture the chat. But I need to see how I can capture both streams. For instance, Djibouti Show does that. Djibouti show on uh, Twitch and YouTube, who I've been watching for many years. They have both the YouTube and the Twitch chat up. With the, like, uh, symbols and whatnot. I gotta look into the... Uh, the rules on that, though. I know, I read something about Twitch. You have to be careful about... I think you just can't, like, can't promote another platform or something, but I don't know. Which is like a new ad to or new rules that you can't make an ad about yourself or something. <laughs> I wonder if my remember that old ad we had for the Li Flies Mike Fishing Club, our Twitch ad. I wonder if that would be violating Twitch guidelines or something. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm gonna look into that, Jen. We're kind of in the early stages of our multi-streaming, so. Ah, uh, hmm. I love some good springtime blueberries, Slum Thunder. DJ Short. All right, we're looking good. We only have, oops, God, I'm dropping everything. We only have a couple more tails to tie for the banners. And then I suppose we could start cutting in popper heads, wrapping heads, and then, uh, you know, figuring it out. Ooh, the mites. Oh, God. Yeah, God. Good luck with that. Shit. DJ Short. <laughs> Shout out. The world's colliding. Hey, man. I remember being in high school reading some books. Uh, DJ Short has a couple books. Mm-hmm. Dude's a legend, in my opinion. My buddy out in Colorado is uh, a huge fan. Luckily, he, by the way, here in New York, all that is uh, legit nowadays, so we don't got to worry about that. It's one of the benefits, New York. Slight. <laughs> There's not many. <laughs> How you doing, Joe F? We're doing some commercial time. We're working on some banners. And possibly some clousers, but I do want to switch over and tie some flies for myself at some point. So I gotta see. I know generally I think it's uh I got I got we got tons of time to stream. I have session zero of my buddy's D D game we're starting up from level one, so I just, I still don't know. If anyone here plays D D, what class do you think I should play? I've played a fighter. And I've played a ranger, a Drake Warden Ranger. I think I'll never beat that character. My last character was so good. And then we've done a Barbarian and a Warlock playing solo.
a kinky muffler <laughs> or a kinky muddler a kinky muddler i was like a kinky muffler what is with these i uh, these fly tying names they're coming up with some crazy shit yeah the kinky muddler if you think about it the kinky muddler was one of the original uh originators of a semi uh spicy name uh kinky muddler yeah unless you're talking about a kinky muffler and that's a totally different fly <laughs> and in which case uh, <laughs> i love it it makes me laugh so uh um were you talking about south african rupert you were chatting about there if so he's a solid bloke that he lives in south ireland yeah I, i'm pretty sure that's who i'm talking about rupert harvey flies and i think his name is rupert harvey flies uk i'll look it up on instagram we can take a look okay muddler yeah yeah, I actually, so here's a fun story, Joe, you want to listen to this? Um, back when I was a kid, probably 10 year, or 11 years old, early stages of the internet, you know, we're talking about Windows 95 or 98, and uh, there was a website where you could post fly patterns, and this was like the first website, and all it was is you could post a photo and a material list. And I don't even think there were comments or something like that, but you could maybe like give it a like or something. So I was putting, I had a sand deal fly up there and then I had a deer hair deceiver, I called it. And I thought I came up with this because this is pre-internet right before you could find everything. And uh, what do you call it? I tied a deceiver tail with some bucktail and then I spun a deer hair head and put eyes on it. Some dude reached out to me and sent me an email. And it turns out this guy was writing books about trout fishing and stuff. And he was a book, he was doing a book on the evolution of the kinky muddler. Um, or the muddler minnow, I should say. I'm sorry. Not the kinky muddler. And uh, at the time, uh, he like thought I was like an adult, but I was a kid. So I had my parents, they had to email him and stuff. But it ended up, I don't think he ever put the book together. But then I looked years later, there's a fucking fly called, or excuse my language, part of my French. I forgot on YouTube, I gotta be careful. Uh, I think we're all right, but still, um, the, what do you call it? The deer hair deceiver in a book from like the eighties that Lefty Cray made of just like different flies from all over for salt water. <laughs> and I was like, God, this is why I'm not a big fan. I like, uh, I never like come up with my own flies or something. It's hilarious. But the kinky muddler. Yes. You're talking about a Johnny King's fly. My, my bad. I, I thought you were talking about the original, uh, muddler minnow i got confused there yeah johnny kane's kinky muddler great fly we actually tied like th two three hundred of those a variation on it for some guides uh live years ago on twitch i had a big order for uh these two guides out in montauk amazing guides ernie french and um merritt white out here in long island so yeah we could definitely tie some i actually specifically um i was using ep fiber believe it or not for the heads um for that one but you can tie it obviously with the slinky fiber or kinky fiber or whatever um but yeah that'd be great we could definitely tie one of those they're a great fly maybe i should tie one for the fly box later i have all the material for it so it's not that hard to tie Yes, let me pull up real quick, Doc. I got distracted by all the all the fly talk. We're looking at two channels streaming at once. <laughs> um, oh, it's just Rupert Harvey Flies is his name. Yep. And quickly, I'll show you. Like you could see how he he drills out. He's airbrushing them. This is Rupert Harvey flies, by the way. You can check them out. Let's see if we can get it three places. So you can see the front. This is how he makes them. And I'm thinking this is our best bet. So, where is that? So, he, like, drills out the middle, and then he cuts it at an angle in a jig. Like, he's got a jig and everything. He's, like, banging out a bunch of them. I think you could, but the thing is, he's got like a nice, uh, a lathe, essentially, that he's using for the heads. I'm assuming you could probably just take a drill bit or something. You know what I mean? Um, but he might just sell the heads, too. Maybe we just buy the heads from, from him. I don't know. Maybe he sells the heads. 
if I'm not wrong, I believe he sells these little cheat cones for um, for hollow flies. And it looks like he 3D prints them. So he very well may sell the popper heads, I don't know. Or at least we could get the jig or something. But shout out to Rupert Harvey Flies. Check him out on Instagram. He's a really nice dude. I'll have to reach out to him and ask him some questions. It's been a while since I talked to him, but... Oh yeah, yeah. I've talked to him before. He's a great guy. He he was he's very conscious about. Uh, he sent me this thing about environmental packaging because he knows I do commercial fly tying. But I told him that I don't uh, individually package my flies. I send them in. I tell all the shops, listen, put them in a display box. I'm not packaging each one. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've done it before because saltwaterflies.com sends them to me, but that's how he does it. But uh, he's an awesome dude. I'll have to reach out to him then and get a jig. And then we can make our own heads. And uh, I'm not going to, like, tie these commercially or anything. I'll tell them, too, for sure. This is just for our purposes of fishing. Oh, what am I doing? I already put flash on there. I'm getting so excited about GT jigs for popper heads. Because <clears throat> after fishing those yesterday, man, <clears throat> I know when there's big fish around and there's a uh, bunker and stuff, that popper is going to do really well because that action is just wild. That action is going to be nuts. So if there's a way we can effectively make them by not spending too much time and we can get them consistent, that's where a jig comes into play. So that way you can cut it consistently every time, you know? And if it's a jig, I can just 3D print. That would be even better. But if he sells them, that's fine. Because I know he's got a 3D printer. <clears throat> we'll see. Maybe I'll I'll look into getting a uh, FDM jig at some. I mean, an FDM printer at some point. So we can not. So I can not only make like a cool castle <laughs> or something with the uh, for D and D, but I can also 3D print. Uh, fish heads or something you know i gotta say though i'm not a fan of like the plastic heads and stuff i guess theoretically if there's a way we could print a popper head and it could be sealed that's one thing but i do like the foam you know i don't want to go with a completely resin or uh plastic head because i've never really been a fan of those things so if there's a way we can you know still use foam that's the way i'd like to do it Definitely not buying a lathe, but <laughs> we'll, we'll have to figure out how to drill the back of those poppers out. I'm sure you could just use a, uh, I'm not tying these commercially, so I'm sure I could just use a, uh, a drill, you know, or like a Dremel with a bit or something to ream out the backside, I think is what he was doing, or the front, I could be wrong, I forget. I'll have to message him. Yeah, we'll see if I get some time today. I mean, I might go down and do some fishing. I guess we'll see. Fake pole dancers from M&D Outfitters, Massachusetts. They've caught a lot of fish. The action is good, but they don't have rattles. Yeah. Well, I just tied a rattle in to that one. They don't. You don't have to put rattles. Um, I think with the DC Dodger kit, they didn't even say you had to use rattles. I could be wrong, though. It's been so long. Um... The rattles are, I just always, it's always fun putting rattles in a big fly like that, right? Um, that being said, they will break, especially the glass ones. That's why I'm going to try and start using some plastic ones, some smaller ones. But I've never been happy, I've never found like rattles that I've been really happy with that aren't extremely cumbersome to tie, in my opinion. I got to find like some teeny rattles or something. Not teeny, but like... A large enough size to have an impact in saltwater fishing, but not too large, you know. I will say, though, that rattle pole dancer or that rattle DC Dodger I have has some of the best action. Maybe that big rattle affects the weight of it. Uh, what rod are you throwing that on? What are you talking about? The one that we were throwing yesterday? That big DC Dodger? We were throwing it on the eight weight. <laughs> My arms are killing me. 
Luckily, the wind was coming at an angle, so we could use the wind to our advantage. But, yeah, ideally, I'd be throwing a 9 or a 10 weight with, like, a Rio outbound short. I was using some crappy fly line and an 8 weight. Not ideal, but we were making it work. But, yeah. 9 weight, 10 weight. Spe specifically a 10 weight, I would figure, because this is a big fish fly. I mean, you'll certainly catch smaller fish, but this is... You know, if I had this set up on a uh, on the bunker boat, I'm telling you right now, uh, I could do some damage with that popper because it, it's all surface action. The fish come up and, I mean, we have bunker falling off our, you know, it's a 25-foot Carolina skiff. And the bunker fall off and the striped bass come up and eat them, like as they're falling off the boat. Like I've seen some crazy stuff. Every once in a while, I'll just throw a bunker into the water, big splash, and they smack the water, and they're kind of stunned a little bit, and then, boom, this, like, giant bass will come up and eat it, and we're just sitting there laughing. <laughs> so if I bring that, I'm telling you right now, if I have the opportunity, whew, I just got to find, even if I'm not bunker fishing, I just got to find bunker schools and whatnot. You just have to find one that's being pressured, which is not always easy. Ooh, some lemon cookies. Nice. Yeah, we're actually almost going to be done with these soon. I guess we can cut some heads. Or I could save that for off stream and we can just start tying some clousers. I have another... I don't know. 24 eyes to tie on to some hooks, and then we start tying the tails for those. Oh, yeah. No, I've, I've heard of that, especially uh, like shrimp boats, squid boats. They have sharks and tuna just that just follow the boats. You can actually follow them and, you know, catch fish from what I've heard. Happens up here as well. But yeah, you would think like all the noise and this and that, that the bass would be spooked. But I think they're just, they know what the deal is with us. And it's literally a free meal. Even if there's like all this noise going on, there's all these bunker that are freaking out. And it's like the dinner bells are turned on, you know. So if I did some traveling, I don't know if some of these spots have service, honestly. But man, there's some spots that I've learned about that probably hold some pretty big fish. In the next, you know, month, month and it, or, you know, into June. So I guess possibly we'll need to do some driving around and see if we can have, if we have service in some of these spots I've never streamed before. It's a bit of a travel, you know, 30, 40 minutes at times, but we can get to some spots where there's some serious fishing going on. I think we can get to the same out here, but I don't have a lot of service in some of these areas. I know that for a fact because we've gone out fishing with. AC fishing on his boat in some of these spots. But then again, I also just need to go do some fishing, I guess. And <laughs> if I if I don't have service, I'll just bring like a GoPro so I can share it with you folks later. But I just need to go out. I want to catch some big fish. The best time is going to be May into early June. At least that's when that happens around here with the big fish that are inshore. Yeah, what class am I going to run in D&D &D for this new set campaign? I've no, I kind of want to go like an old wizard. wizard. <laughs> the classic old wizard trope. Crazy old man is what I'm thinking. All right, let's break open a new bag of some, we got this Grande Estaz, that's what we're using. Hey, Slim, what's up? They got fancy with this one, they coiled it up and tied it. I've never seen that before, usually it's just shoved in there.
I'll tell the tell the redhead I say hi back. Hope you guys are doing good. Put a little super glue on there, then we start wrapping this sucker. Again, I have to leave myself. You see me keep measuring every time. I just kind of use one of the popper heads as an example, cut right in the middle. And it's okay if we go a little over because that, where the back of the popper is, you can slip that over the material. But I try to keep it consistent. Maybe change the song here in a bit. I was trying to come up with some new beats. I wasn't really happy with a lot of them. By the way, if you guys haven't on Twitch, check out Alaskan Outdoors. Threw us a big raid yesterday and stayed and chatted for a while, so I made sure to go give him a follow. But it looks like he does commercial salmon fishing via trolling and works on boats and stuff up in Alaska. So it was very nice. Make sure you check them out on Twitch, all you Twitchers. All right, we got the last banner here. Unfortunately, I still need six more hooks for a total of four do uh, two dozen, but I gotta get I gotta get another pack. We get we almost got those done. I just gotta real quick. I I guess I could show you how we do the heads and whatnot, but just so you have an idea. And then we'll switch over to some clousers. Probably right about there, maybe a little bit more. Nope, right about there. Spot on. Using my eyeballs. Go ahead and just add a little bit more. So, like I said, I usually do a a select uh, a pinch of bucktail, pretty pretty big. I like to tie these pretty full these banners because they're making a commotion. Also, if you don't put enough bucktail on there, what happens is you get one bluefish 